you. It's all good. It's all good. Good. I'm glad. Very good. Super. So we'll just walk, talk you through it all. So please don't worry. Just relax and enjoy. And if little ones need, if, well, if Rex needs to move around and run around, please let him do so. And don't worry if uh, if Otis decides water is not his thing this morning. That's completely okay as well. There's a little table right there and uh, some shelves, like little pull-up drawers with some things that Rex might be interested. Yeah, so please. You know. Yes, Lily's here. Mm -hmm. And Sancia for Sunday school. Um, it's near the beginning, so it, there, um, we, we have a gift for Otis that I just found, but Cliff's going to share it with the children at children's time. It's a, it's a book all about baptism. So um, that'll be, uh, so there'll be uh, opening, welcome prayers, then there'll, uh, right after the offertory, so the givings, then there'll be the children's time, and right after that will be the baptism. So before the reading, the scripture, and the sermon, and all that stuff. Do you want to take them around and show them where uh, where the playroom is to the nursery? That's great. Thank you. <laughs> oh, is Adam still there? Dad. Sorry. Adam, I put, so there's the, the picture for Deb to pour water into the bowl in the font. Okay. But I also put a little cup there with a little bit of water in it. And if Rex wants to pour some in, he's welcome to. And if he doesn't, that's cool too. Okay, perfect, thank you. It's already written. Surely God is in this place. Help me notice. Good morning and welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Sharon Valentine and I am the Intentional Interim Minister here at Fort Massey United Church in Halifax. Thank you for joining us today in person in the sanctuary and virtually wherever you are tuning in. We are glad that you have joined us. You are needed valued and belong. It is May 15th, 2022, and the fifth Sunday of Easter. Today, we are celebrating the sacrament of holy baptism. Alive, we thrive. Let's listen for Jesus' teaching, modeling loving one another, and discover 
what God reveals to us today. And at this time, I'm going to invite Jenny to play some quiet music while Lily and her helper come on up to light our candle here in the sanctuary. And if you have a candle at home, I invite you to light it now or just hold the light of Christ in your heart. We light the Christ candle, inviting God to surprise us with the extraordinary that enlivens all our senses with the wonder of God's presence, that are serving, caring, wondering, and loving will be extended generously and compassionately in our loving one another. Let Christ's light shine. We acknowledge the Mi'kmaq traditional territory and the unceded territories and treaties of the First Nations people of each person who is connecting with us. The lands that we are privileged to live, work, play, pray, and worship on. Lands on which members and elders of the local indigenous communities and their ancestors have been caretakers for many centuries. We offer thanks and deep gratitude for the First People's stewardship, wisdom of generations, and in humility, continue to seek to live into truth, reconciliation, and right relations. We come with grateful hearts, desiring to live in peace and in friendship with all people. I invite you now to join in the call to worship. You will find the words printed on the screen. God be with you. We come knowing we are loved. We pray that love will be lived out in and through us. What you do is to be comfortable where you are sitting, feeling your feet grounded with the earth beneath you, sensing the divine in whatever way makes sense to you. As we prepare to just breathe together, breathe in God's presence, and as we release our breath, letting go of all tension and anxiety, Anything that takes us away from our sensing of the holy. Let's breathe it in together and let it out, releasing our breath into silence. God, you called us to this place, a haven for healing, for hope. We come with the pain of our burdens. We come to hear your word of hope for us. Help each of us here as you call us by name. We join our voices in prayer and praise. Rain down your unending love, for we ask it in the name of the one who modeled love. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now raise our voices in praise as we sing of abundant blessings. I invite you as you're comfortable to stand as we sing for the fruit of all creation. Voices United, 227.
Jesus is the Prince of Peace. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Please turn to your neighbor and exchange sign of peace. Good morning. My name is Allison McDonald. Our additional thanks to our worship team this morning. Jenny Trites, our music director at the piano and organ. Jade Fraser and our choir. Colleen Estabrook, ushering this morning. Saul and Daisy and Elaine Jansen providing tech support. Sansia Noor and Lily Noor providing Sunday school and nursery care. Sharon's message today is entitled, Kin to One Another. We extend a special welcome to Otis Berkshire Penny being baptized today, and to all his family and friends joining us this morning. Welcome. Please join with me as we say together our creed. Uh, please stand as able. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others. Take up offering as we did before COVID. Thank you for any financial givings. They can be placed on the offering plate as you exit after worship through par envelopes or by e-transfer. God's love is radical and transformational, yet simple and so expansive. There are so many ways in which we give and receive. According to your comfort, I invite you to hold your hands in a gesture pretending to hold the offering plate. In our giving and in our receiving, we reflect on the love we share, the ways that we live out loving one another and what it means for us. The offering will now be received. loving God. Thank you for all the ways that you do love us. The way of love is our song. Holy Comforter and friend, be our mantra, our commitment of our way of living. We do not only offer our gifts to you, but our community to all who are lonely, hearts to all who are grieving, our hope to all who have lost their way, our lives to all who have been tossed aside by the world. Bringer of hope, creator God, awesome wonder, continue to inspire and surprise us with unexpected gifts and wonders of your presence. 
We bring our gifts, the work of our hands, our hearts, our lives. We pray that they may be used to bring the hope of Jesus Christ to our world in this time and place. Renew and restore us in compassion. Bless us and all our gifts to honor and serve you faithfully. Use us and all our gifts to share love here and throughout our world. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to invite Cliff to come forward and share with us a special book. We're actually going to give this book to Otis as well today. This book that he's going to be reading is called Baptized in the Water, Becoming a Member of God's Family. And it's a picture book. It was just released April 19th, so I think it will probably be new to most of us. Enjoy. Baptism is a beautiful, holy, mysterious gift. When water is poured on by a person, when prayers are said, when songs are sung, and promises are made, God's holy, invisible spirit hovers in the air, just like it did over 2,000 years ago when Jesus stepped into the waters of the River Jordan. That wonderful day, Jesus was baptized by a man called John, and something amazing happened. The heavens opened up, a white dove flew gently down, and God said, This is my son, I am pleased with him. Can you imagine God smiling that day? Baptized in the water, dove flies from above. Jesus in the river, covered in God's love. Ever since Jesus was baptized, Christians all around the world have chosen to be baptized too. And every time a baptism happens, God smiles and whispers, this is my son, this is my daughter, I am pleased with them. When we are baptized, it's a sign that we are all part of God's great family. There are different ways to be baptized, but the meaning is the same. In baptism, we belong to God. The water makes us clean and new. Baptized in the water, a gift for me and you, a sign that we belong to God, who makes us clean and new. Sometimes parents bring their babies to church to be baptized. They want everyone to know that their child belongs to God. The pastor sprinkles or pours water on the baby's head, and everyone promises to love that little one and teach him or her about God. The baby will not remember that special day, but the parents will never forget it. Baptized in the water, we promise, sing, and pray. A little one is brought forward. It's baby's special day. Sometimes, older children or adults decide themselves they'd like to be baptized. They might go right under the water. They want everyone to know that they belong to God. Baptized in the water like Jesus long ago, God's Holy Spirit dances as waters gently flow. But you don't need to be baptized in a church. Some people are baptized in a river, like Jesus was, or in a lake, or even in an ocean. Baptized in the water, gathered by the lake, God hears our songs and prayers, each promise that we make. No matter where we are baptized, in a church, or a lake, or a river. What matters is that we are joined in one human family, and each of us belongs to God. Baptized in the water, held in God's great air, one family joined together, young and old, everywhere. No matter where, sorry, no matter how we are baptized, whether we're covered by the water, or it's sprinkled or poured, what really matters is that we are covered in God's great love and grace. When we are baptized, God's love pours over us, just like the water. God smiles and whispers, You are my son. You are my daughter. I am pleased with you. Baptized in the water, 
covered by God's grace. We are God's sons and daughters in every time and place. A baptism prayer. Dear God, thank you for the meaning and mystery of baptism. Thank you that when we are touched by water in baptism, you reach down to cover us with grace and hold us in your love. Remind us that through the gift of baptism, we are one family, joined together around the world, across the years by one spirit, one faith, and one hope. We are your sons and daughters. We belong to you. Amen. Let us now say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomed everyone. No barriers. No harsh judgments. No separation by qualities or status. We come together seeking to love one another, to be compassionate, in acts of kindness and caring. The baptism vows do not ask us to be perfect. Our promises represent our commitment to do what we can to help each other, to become the special and unique persons that God intends. In our promise and commitment, we as family and friends offer our love and faithful support to those being baptized. Baptism is an act of welcoming, blessing, and belonging. Baptism proclaims the unconditional grace and love of God. It is God's yes to us and our yes to God. Baptism is a symbolic action that signifies the new life that God gives us as we join our church community. The sacrament of baptism is the single rite of initiation into the Christian community in the Christian church. We are united with Christ, united with one another, and the Christian community of every time and place. We are called as disciples of Christ to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice and strengthened by the Holy Spirit for the work of the church in the world. During this sacrament, we all recommit ourselves to this calling. And as we prepare to sing now, may God's grace fill you with that sense of knowing that you are a beloved child of God, called by name, loved by God. During the singing of this hymn, I'm going to invite Alice and McDonald, our clerk of session, along with Otis and his family, to come forward to the font. We are going to sing together, I Have Called You By Your Name, Voices United 161, and we're going to sing verses 1 and 2 at this time, and we will finish up the hymn after the baptism.
initiation into the body of Christ through baptism. Baptism is about the promise of an entire community to nurture a child in his or her spiritual faith journey, to share in the commitment of love and well-being, supporting growth physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, family, friends, mentors, all the people who will impact Otis's life. Nancy and Adam, as parents of Otis, you have indicated that it is your desire that your child be baptized. Will you accept the responsibility, acting and speaking on his behalf? Will you share your faith with him in faith, hope and love? sharing with him the stories and practices of Christian faith, and at the same time, encouraging him to respect and learn about spiritual and faith practices expressed by others. If so, please respond, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Will you join in this community of faith to celebrate God's presence, live with respect in creation, and love and serve others? If so, respond, I will, God being my helper. I will, God being my helper. Do you believe in God's source of love in Jesus Christ, love incarnate, and in the Holy Spirit, love's power? If so, respond, I do, by the grace of God. I do, by the grace of God. Do you seek to resist evil and to live in love and justice? If so, respond, I do, God being my helper. I do, God being my helper. Will you follow the way of Jesus Christ? If so, respond, I will. God being my helper. I will. God being my helper. Would everyone in the present here in the sanctuary and those at home virtually please rise according to your comfort, recognizing that we all rise in spirit. We who are gathered here today represent family, friends, those special people who will mentor Otis and his parents throughout his life. We represent this community of faith and all those who will provide spiritual nourishment to Otis and his parents. By the grace of God, do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament offer your commitment to support and nourish Otis within a community that worships God, resists evil, and seeks justice? If so, respond, we will, God being our helper. We will, God being our helper. Thank you, congregation may be seated. And I'm going to ask Deb Carner, who is Nancy's cousin, and Rex, if you would like to, Rex is Otis's big brother, to pour the water into the font this morning. I invite you to do that. There you go. Thank you. Let us pray. Our loving God, holy friend and comforter, we gather acknowledging the great love you share for your people. In this act of baptism, we acknowledge and give thanks for the blessings of Jesus' baptism in the waters of the Jordan. We think of all those baptized and ask your continued blessing and presence in the life of Otis 
as he is baptized today, and for his family, his friends, and all those who will be mentors and supports throughout his life. Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, through the living water of baptism, you bless us. May your spirit be upon us and what we do, that this water may be a sign of new life in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. What is the name of this child? Otis Berkshire Penny. Otis Berkshire Penny. I baptize you in the name of the Father. I baptize you in the name of the Son. I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. And we mark you with the sign of the cross. With the sign of the cross, you are marked as a beloved child of God. Due to COVID, we cannot do a laying on of hands as we did before COVID. I will invite Nancy and Adam to do this on our behalf and invite all who are comfortable to raise their hands, one or both, in a gesture of laying on of hands, imagining that you are placing your hands on Otis's head or his shoulders. Gentle God, we give thanks for Otis, received with water, words, and the mystery of your grace, received into the church and this community of faith, into the household of faith, we welcome you with joy and thanksgiving. Otis, let your light shine before others. May you grow to be the person God calls you to be. We give thanks for Otis. Receive with water, words, and mystery into this church, in this community of faith, into the household of faith. We welcome you with joy and with thanksgiving. It's okay. And at this time, we're going to light the baptism candle for Otis, our newly baptized. The light shines. And then Allison will offer our gift on behalf of the congregation and our choir offers this blessing. Welcome, baby Otis. We are so glad to have you a part of our faith family. At this time, we're going to complete our hymn, I Have Called You By Your Name. Voices Unite at 161. Sorry, more voices 161.
saying, I share a brief quote followed by an adaptation of perhaps a familiar Aesop's fable. From the words of Henry Emile, life is short and we do not have long to gladden the hearts of those who walk the way with us. So let's be swift to love and let us make haste to show kindness. And from the Aesop's fable adaptation, a young son was lamenting, almost afraid to even go out because he wanted to be sure he was making a good impression, saying and doing the right thing, making good choices. And it felt really overwhelming. So his dad invited him to come with him. He asked if he would journey with him to market over each of the next five days. On the first day, the son rode on the donkey with his father walking beside him. Passers-by lamented and had lots to say about how awful it was that the young lad would be riding on the donkey leaving his older father to walk. On the second day, the father rode on the donkey and the son was walking. This time the comments were how terrible it was that a father would expect his young son to walk while he rode the donkey. On the third day, as they went to market, both father and son sat on the donkey. This time the comments were how terrible it was that they should both be riding the donkey and burdening the poor beast so. On the fourth day, neither walked, sorry, neither rode the donkey. The, ma the man and his son were walking along and all the passers-by were commenting how foolish they were to walk when there was a donkey that was built to carry that someone should be riding a donkey. And then on the fifth and final day, the son and his dad walked them carrying the donkey and they commented on the foolishness of such behavior. I think we can all take a moral lesson from that story to know that we're never going to please everyone all of the time. And as that father taught his son, do the best you can. Do what is right for you. Today, Allison is going to be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 31 to 35, and Allison is reading from the Bible version, The Message. A new command. When he had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is seen for who he is, and God seen for who he is in him. The moment God is seen in him, God's glory will be on display. In glorifying him, he himself is glorified. Glory to all around. Children, I am with you for only a short time longer. You are going to look high and low for me, but just as I told the Jews, I am telling you, where I go, you are not able to come. Let me give you a new commandment. Love one another. In the same way I loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples, when they see the love you have for each other. Offered as wisdom for the journey. May you walk in its light. Let us receive this anthem. He is there.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and the meditations of all of our hearts be open and acceptable to you. We pray, O oh God, that you speak to our hearts to find the truths of where we do and do not love one another. Among us and beyond, we thank you that you are willing to love us without condition. Help us examine where we have said or thought damaging or negative words, expressed hurtful or harmful judgments. Help us to examine our beliefs, our intentions, our actions, and to observe ourselves as others view us. Move us to be open, to be all that we are called to be. Compel us to receive what you reveal to us today as we strive to become instruments of your love. In Jesus' loving name, amen. In popular contemporary theology, the kingdom of God has often been replaced with the term kingdom. Breaking down barriers of patriarchal terminology and inviting a reframing of connecting families of different configurations by choice and by chance, by family of origin or not, we connect with what family means for us, relatives, our siblings. What about kindred spirits? God and Jesus invite us into relationship with one another, to know one another as siblings, to care for one another. In baptism, we have been welcomed into this worldwide Christian family. As each new child and adult is baptized, they are welcomed into this same family. Today, we celebrate being part of a family, being kin to one another, being called to the task of kingdom building love and sharing love. But to love is not easy. To love when you have to walk away, let another go for safety, for healing, for the gift of new living. Can you recall a time, perhaps this week, when you found yourself judging another, if only in your mind, or that you have felt judged by another. It happens a lot. Feel Jesus' love in the space of that hurt. Let it be healing. Let it wash over you in a moment of forgiveness and of letting go. Can you recall a time this week when you have felt love? Give thanks. Sometimes it's hard to forgive another. Sometimes it's hard to realize that we are not being as welcoming as we would like to think we are. We are confronted. We ask God about loving others. We want to know who's excluded. Who are we excluding, and how does this happen? What does the tipping point, what does transformation look like, where we find ourselves feeling that love and being non-judgmental, that we embrace and welcome all, that we know we are following the way of Christ's love, what is that holy shift, S-H-I-F-T? We have spoken about it before. We may recognize it as an inner voice, intuition, a sense of knowing that guides us to what is a loving act.
this week, probably like me, you have been opening doors and windows, stepping outside, feeling the warmth of creation, and it's lifting our spirits. Last Sunday after worship, our Queen Street door was open. And a passerby, probably someone who had walked by our building lots of times. But with the door open, the passerby asked to take a look inside. Curious, he came. What curiosity do you bring this week? Opening the doors of hearts, literal doors, what are we afraid of? I am reminded again of theologian Parker Palmer's beloved story of learning to mountain climb. He was doing great and suddenly got overcome by fear. His instructors, seeing him stuck and unmoving, checked in. And her words of encouragement were to lean into it, not to back away, not to let fear be the bigger voice, but to lean in, to have confidence and take on the next little step, the next single handhold, one foothold at a time. We can all relate to overwhelm, tasks and challenges that are big, but when we make it smaller, focus on the right now, in this moment, in this sacred space, we can breathe in God's presence. We are okay. It is enough. We lean in to whatever mountain we might be climbing in our lives, concentrating on reaching only the next handhold. Jesus reminds us that love is there. Love is there to be the tipping point of our present moment. Love is what is transformational, the handhold we need. Jesus, who knows our name, who is our kin, is there with us, the one for us to always lean into. It is enough. Life is filled with hope and opportunities. Jesus said, I give you a new command, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Returning to the words of Henry Emile, life is short and we do not have long to gladden the hearts of those who walk the way with us. So let us be swift to love and let us make haste to show kindness. And in my adaptation this morning, let us be swift to love and let us make haste to show kinness. Love one another. Let us dare to love one another deeply, profoundly, transformationally. Love each other. May it be so. Praise be to God and amen. Let us pray. 
loving God, may we pause and just remind ourselves to dwell in your love, to feel your comfort, your strength, guidance, and abiding presence, knowing, O oh God, we are not alone. You are with us. Creator God, we can find problems that are bigger than we can begin to understand. We feel the present day anguishes, challenges, fears and frustrations. Help us make them smaller, to focus on this present moment and to lean in, to be transformed, comforting friend and companion. We experience the hurts, the violence and abuse, senseless destruction of humankind. The animal and the plant kingdom, our waters, our earth, and our air. Stir us to do all we can to take care of each other, to love one another, our environment, and all of creation, for us and for our future generations. Equip and direct decision makers guide us to what we need for our self-care and for others to connect with what gives us hope joy and resilience today compel us to notice your loving presence bird songs that move our spirit the sounds of tiny voices that remind us of love and life the feeling of the gentle breezes that remind us of the Pentecost winds blowing in and through us, of the warming earth beneath us, and the air that permeates our every cell, waters that sustain us and all of life, guide us to stop and to pause, to notice, to be struck by your wonder and awe. Divine mystery, help us to be reminded of our baptismal vows as we have welcomed Otis today. Show us what needs to be renewed in us. Rejuvenate and strengthen us to be re-energized in our commitments and in our purpose. Help us to be committed to life that is thriving physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We carry, O oh God, many on our hearts, celebrating joys with praise and thanksgiving, and also lifting our concerns. Receive them now from the silence of our hearts. We thank you, O oh Holy One, in Jesus' name, amen. And our closing hymn this morning, which I invite everyone who wishes to, to stand to sing as we sing together, I was there to hear your morning cry. Voices United, 644.
about discipleship, we are reminded of the petals of the flower. This week we've been continuing with both cleaning and decluttering, and the work continues. Thank you so much for all the helping hands that continue in our project to ready ourselves to be more fully open as we hope for the pandemic to get fully behind us. We will continue to work on cleaning and decluttering in our building, as I'm sure you're doing in your homes as well. At the same time, I invite us to reflect on our own needs for our spiritual cleaning and decluttering, whatever that mean, may mean for us, to connect with others, to connect with nature, to have time for ourselves, to sort out priorities. As disciples, we continue to love one another. And at this time, I'm going to invite Allison to share our notices. All of our notices are in Thursday's new newsletter and printed in the bulletin. Here are a few highlights, though. As Sharon said, thank you very much to all who participated in the decluttering. Anyone interested in helping with weeding and preparing gardens is invited to come out Thursday, May 19th at 10.30 with a rain date of Friday, May 20th. Bring your gardening gloves and gardening tools if you have any. If you have any questions, please contact Kathy Evans. Who's, Kathy's in our choir. The next night's breakfast at the Stakenstein restaurant on Young Street is Friday at 9.30. Please contact Ian McDonald on Wednesday to let him know if you're coming. A reminder to allow extra time to get to worship next Sunday as the Blue Nose Marathon is taking place. And I think many of you will remember what that was like the last few years. And this may mean that you will encounter road closures and traffic delays. Our yoga instructor, Andrew McKay, needs accommodations on the peninsula. If you know anyone who needs a house sitter or of an inexpensive room to rent or a flat available, please contact David Griffiths, in our choir, uh, who can provide reference and introduction. And uh, blessings and our best wishes to all who are celebrating birthdays anniversaries or other celebrations this week. Thank you. Go now in peace. In baptism, God names us beloved children. We are kin to one another. As we go from this place, we go out to serve our loving God, to follow the teachings of Jesus, be transformed, love one another. Be inspired, love one another. Be filled with hope and joy, love one another. 
May the raindrops fall lightly on your brow. May the soft winds freshen your spirit. May the sun shine brightly on your heart. And may the burdens of your day rest lightly upon you. And may God enfold you in the mantle of God's love. And may we all show love in all that we are. God bless you, and amen. Thank you.